All right, so let's go through the, uh, uh, first of all, any questions on uh, what, what, what we talked about last time? Any questions? Suggestions? Objections? We've got no questions? All right. So what's overloading? Do you remember that? Um, when a function can have the same name, but C++ will recognize it um, with its parameters. Like oh my god, you can come over here and teach. <laughs> <laughs> I was like, so essentially, um, it was in detail, like when functions have the same name and different arguments, okay? Functions, same name, different arguments, that's overloading, essentially means uh, that the, the compiler looks at the arguments and matches the function that carries the same thing. Which feature of object orientation this falls into? Do you remember that? Which feature of object orientation function overloading falls under? We had three things. We had inheritance, uh, encapsulation, and polymorphism. Polymorphism. <laughs> polymorphism. Thank you. Polymorphism. OK, so remember, you have to hear three passes before you say anything, especially that loud. OK? <laughs> All right, so that's that. OK, so. Uh, what, uh, uh, how do we create an alias to an integer? Do you remember that? Like, what is an alias? In, what do we call an alias in, s okay. Uh, we can, reference, thank you. So, so uh, we can create aliases for variables and objects created. So any, anything you create, you can create an alias for it, which essentially means have one, more than one name for it. The problem with aliases were that you can, it's not a problem. The way they work is that you cannot have an alias created and set it later. An alias must be initialized. What is the difference between initialization and setting? Do you remember that? Uh, initialization means we are declaring the variables and the setting up the variables. Yes, declaring and setting at the same time. When you create a variable and set the variable at the time you are creating it, that's initialization. That has nothing to do with setting. So although we used to use the same syntax in old C++ and put an equal in front of it, we used to say integer i equals to zero to initialize i to zero. Now we use curly bracket just to remove from your brain that that's not assignment. Assignment happens after the object is created and overwrites the value of the object where initialization builds the object using an initial value, which means at no time object will have any value other than the value that we are, we are initializing it with. Where in setting, you create something with its default value, either garbage or whatever it is, then you can override it with something, and that's assignment. Are we good with this? And we said functions are called this way, which means an argument of a function initialized by the value that is being passed to a function when the function is called. That's why we can have actually a reference as an argument of a variable. And that eliminates the need for pointers in that era, which means when you have a function and you have a reference as an argument and you pass reference of an integer and you pass an integer to that function, the argument of the function becomes a new name for the variable. Therefore, whatever you do to that reference inside the function affects the variable outside of the function, hence no pointer needed. And these are, why do you look that way? Are you okay? Okay, because you were like, what? <laughs> Your face said you're, you're, you're talking crazy. <laughs> okay, I, that's, that's what I love about teaching in person. In, if you have, if you watch the videos from online subjects that we had through COVID and 345, because 345 lectures are online, I keep polling people. Give me the answer, and people are supposed to answer yes or no. Like, over here, I can look at your face, and it looks like either you're outside in your mind, or uh, you have a question and you're not asking. But anyways, my apologies. I re misinterpreted your face. OK, so, 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 so that's what we wanted to say. We wanted to say that. Only single objects, when you pass a single object to a, to a variable, instead of passing its address to modify it, you can actually pass its 
reference, single objects. Arrays don't work that way because arrays are not uh, single objects. They are a composite type made up of different types of structures, and we talked about it. We had a review for pointers and stuff like that mm, in previous days, right? We did that. We good? Are we okay? So now do we have any question after reviewing what we talked about last time? What is a pointer? A pointer is a is the address to the variable. It stores the address inside it. Stores the address of other things. What is a type of a pointer? Which category? We had two major categories of types in C language. We had real values and we had integrals. We had floating point values and we had integers. Which one pointers fall into? Integrals. Integrals. Why? Because Pointers are simply unsigned variables, correct? So what is the difference between an unsigned variable and a, and, a, and a pointer? Do you remember that? Tough questions these are, I understand. So if you say pass, I can I'm, pass. OK, so what is the difference between an unsigned variable and a pointer? An unsigned variable and a pointer? An unsigned integer and a pointer. A pointer is an unsigned integer, right? Uh, yeah. You can say pass. <laughs> okay, so. An unsigned variable is a, is a positive integer. Is a positive integer. A pointer is a positive integer. So those are common stuff with it. So uh, unsigned variables, unsigned integers are positive values. Pointers are positive values only two. And the difference is, do you remember? They have one distinct value. That's why we have a type called pointer, like integer pointer A, double pointer B. Why we cannot use just unsigned integers as addresses? Why do you have a special type for a pointer? Because there is a size for the type. There is a size for the type that pointer needs to know. And because of that, the pointers are different with integers, inter unsigned integers, because anybody? When you want add one to an unsigned integer, one will be added to it. When you add one to a pointer, the size of the target will be added to it. So if I add one to an integer pointer, four will be added to it. If I add one to a double pointer, eight will be added to it. That's the only difference between a pointer and an unsigned integer. Are we clear on that? Are we all good? Are we OK one? Are we OK two? Repeat that? OK. <clears throat> Let's say I have a structure. A structure has two integers, three integers in it. What would be the size of the structure? Size of in bytes? 12, right? Because three fours is 12, right? Now, if I have a pointer of that type of structure, the pointer is pointing to a package of three integers, correct? So where does the next structure can sit in memory? 12 bytes further, correct? Therefore, if you add one to the address of that structure, 12 will be added to it, not one, because the next structure can only sit 12 bytes further. Do we understand it now? All right. And now, let's do our Rituals, which is essentially creating a, a visual studio thing. I'm going to repeat that again and again and again, and still I see you are not following the same instructions. So this is, again, we're going to go through it. Create a new project. Empty project provides no starting files. Next. Select the directory in which you want to go to. OP244. Always. Always, always pull a repository before you do anything in it. Always pull first. So I'm going to right click on a repository before I create anything. And I'm going to say tortoise pull. In case I have stuff up in GitHub that I'm not updated with, it's going to bring those things in. And it's going to say success. Everything's up to date. I'm good. Now I'm going to go inside that repository, go to section NAA, 
and select the folder in which I want to be in, NAA, and I'm going to call it 04, January 18th. Make sure this is always clicked because our solution is our project. We don't have a set of projects. It's only one created, and three years later, we're going to have our solution created. And I'm going to come over here, and I'm going to create the file, add new item, prg.cpp, and go include IO stream using namespace std int main return zero. And I'm going to say C out, welcome, welcome to OP. Two four 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 and a a that is zero four January eighteenth and I insert a new line run and compile everything is working perfecto mundo hopefully I get the thing perfect it's there now I'm gonna come over here. Because I'm at a turning point and I'm interested about what I've done over here, what I will do, I'm going to immediately go to my, go to my repository and I'm going to right click over there, click on commit and I'm going to say add all and I'm going to say starting, starting uh, 0 for January 18th. And a, a session. So, and I commit as, and push. Therefore, next time if I want to go back to see which status the class was started with, I have a turning point to. That's how you program every single day. Are we okay with this? All right. Nice. I have the things that I want right down here. So, I'm just going to. Copy those, go in here, go in here, and paste it in here so you have these slides too. Okay? Now, let's talk about dynamic memory allocation. I'm going to bring it over here so it's uh, uh, not in the thing. Again, uh, early, day, uh, early things, I'm going to do slides. I'm not going to do much after. Don't worry about it. We mentioned that when you create an array, a variable, or anything, we did that in the pointer thingy we have done. We said <clears throat> in your executable program, the value will be inserted and you have a pointer over there that points to it. Are we all okay with that? Do we all remember this? So I have A5, that means I have 20 bytes inside my executable. If that was 200, then my executable becomes bigger. So if the array is 10,000, my executable will be bigger, 10,000 integers. Are we okay with this? So everything is inside your, 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 your executable. Now, what if you want to read 10,000 records? You can't do that, right? 10,000 records, really? You, if, you want, if you actually read that much, you got to have like, if let's say I want to get 10,000 cars, and each structure for a car is like, what, 5Ks. 10,000 multiplied by 5K. That's the size of your executable. You're, it's, not, it's not good. You, want, you don't want that. We have a way of uh, fixing this problem. So we can have all the variables that seem to be big or the variables which we don't know how many we want. Like if I told you, write a program that receives few integers from the user and prints them in reverse order. Okay. That's as simple. It's like IPC 144. You can't write this program. Impossible. How can you write such a program? I'm going to say get few integers from, few integers, not 10, few integers from the user and print them in reverse. The very first question is going to be how many integers? So I can create the array for it, right? Because you have to print it in reverse. You have to keep them all 
and then print them in reverse. You cannot just print them one by one. I would say, I don't know. It would say, give me an estimate. You say, I don't know. It could be five. It could be five billion. I don't know. And that makes it impossible. This is when you need to be able to create your array after your program is being executed. So when your program is executing, you have to ask the user, now that you're entering the data, you gongul, you know how many integers you have. Tell me. User says 12. Then you create an array of 12 integers on the fly, and you use it. How that happens is like this. So instead of your integer being inside your executable, what you do is this. You just create the pointer type of the array, because we know arrays are pointers and chunk of stuff, right? You first create the pointer, OK? And you can just keep this. Don't do anything. And then ask user how many things you have. Then you say it's equal to new integer whatever. What happens is that now in your, because this happens at runtime, not at compile time. In here, I'm saying five. Over there, you can put a variable. You cannot put a variable inside an array. The compiler is going to uh, give you an error, say, what the heck you're doing? You cannot. It has to be a constant thing. You cannot do that. But not with dynamic memory allocation. Can you see this? No, the lady over there. Can you see this? Uh, you want to sit somewhere else? I have, like, we have a premium thing over here for you. If you want to move over here, it's all yours. OK? Because <laughs> I see over there you're trying to kind of, OK? So. Right, I, I kept that especially for you. All right, so, 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 now, so now you only have this. In, first of all, your executable is very small. And this is in heap. Where is heap? Heap is the memory in which all the programs are running and operating system has control over it. So you're essentially, by saying new, you're asking the operating system to give you the memory, not the compiler. In here, you're asking the compiler to give you the memory. So compiler inserts that memory inside your executable. When your executable comes to memory, your array comes with it. Done. And when your executable goes out, your array goes with it, right? In here, your program runs. Then you say, the heck with you, compiler. I'm going to ask the operating system, give me five integers. So the five integers are not in your executable anymore, right? And after the program is gone, the executable goes out, memory leak. You have to take care of it yourself. Because you created it, you have to wipe it out. I didn't tell you how over here. <laughs> but I'm going to show you how. OK? They say with power comes responsibility. That's what it is. If you want to do it yourself, you have to wipe it out yourself. OK? And many programs written especially with low-level languages like C++, they have memory leaks. Have you ever had problem with your internet connection? You called Rogers, and the very first thing they tell you is that, unplug your modem, wait for 15 seconds, and put it back on. You know why they're doing They're essentially rebooting your computer because they kept having memory leaks. It piled up and piled up and piled up and piled up. Every connection you made, wireless connection, off and on, it made a leak. And now your memory of the modem is full. There is no way to execute anything. Your program, your module hangs. You take it off. You wait for it, put it back in. Oh, it's connected. Thank you. You're a genius. OK, I'm not a genius. And that's why, you have, that's why you have firmware updates coming over and over. Because they find all these crappy things they have done, they try to fix it, right? And the firmware. So that's why you, it's always good to install firmware updates. For some reason, some people have some kind of phobia. Oh, I'm not going to install anything new on this. You know, it's going to be bad for me. That's not good. You should do it. So, so that's that. That's essentially it. Done? Let's go home. Now, we're not going to do that. So, 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 how do we do it, actually? How do we do, actually, this thing? So, in here, I'm going to say, let's do that reverse thingy that I just told you. Let's just write it in here and see what happens. So, first of all, I need an array without a head, so I'm going to say numbers. Num, come on, you can do it. Numbers, right? And always make sure one of the golden rules one of the golden rules of dynamic memory allocation programming schmigledingy, okay, is an unused pointer is always set to null. 
I just initialized it to null. Halfway you program, you say equal to null PTR. N-U-L-L-P-T-R, I'll explain it to you, okay? That should be your obsession with it. Otherwise, you will have memory leak. You will have crashing programs. And dynamic memory outage is usually a nightmare when it comes to the workshop. You'll see it soon. It's going to come from the workshop, right? Because you keep doing that. It keeps having, and you'll see, okay? So, so your obsession should be an unused pointer. Unused pointer should be always no. Okay, now, now that I accomplished that, or, or you can do it like this just to be happy. Potatoes, potatoes, I'm setting it to null. Then I have integer uh, number of numbers, no, no, <laughs> uh, size, okay, and I'm going to make that zero, obviously, okay. Now I'm going to tell to the user, Enter the number of integer values to be printed in reverse. Okay? And I'll go like that, and I'll do like that. Okay? Now I'll read the size. Are we good with that? By the way, 99.9% .9 of the time, by default, a user of your program is an idiot. Yes, exactly. Even when you are testing your old program, you turn to an idiot. That's the default of the system. Okay? We are not doing foolproof programming. At the beginning of the semester, we'll, all your workshops will try to give you least amount of input because we don't want you to do foolproof entry. Okay? So don't come to me and say, what if user enters over here? Don't do that. Okay, we are assuming that users are sane, normal people. Not normal, normal people are idiots, actually. They're all genius, obsessed, no mistake making type of people, okay? We assume that way. So, user enters the size, number of things that he wants. Now that I have the size, I'm going to say numbers is equal to new int size. So now I have an array to the exact size the user wants. It's not the compiler. I'm asking the operating system to give me that. So as of this moment after nine, numbers becomes an array the size. Are we okay with this? Are we okay with this? All right. So. Now that I have this one, I'm going to start getting the numbers. So I'm going to go, actually size is not supposed to be an integer. I'm not a, who's going to enter minus 5 for a number, right? Size t is a better thing. What is size t? Size t. What is size t? What is size t? What is size t? Unsigned number. It's a, it's an unsigned number because it's indicating size. Because it's being used so many times to, to get the size of things, they say, well, let's just create a type instead of using unsigned integer. We'll just call it size t. So size t became one of the types of C++. Okay? So when you write size, first of all, dash t comes with many things. When you see a dash T, it's an, uh, they say onset rule. It's a rule between, like, it's something, when you see dash T at the end of something, if you don't put it and you see it comes, it means this is a type. Remember that. Okay? We'll have many things like that. So, size T, it's just the size. And then what I'm going to do, so I have the size. So, after this, I'm going to say for size T, I set to zero, I less than size, and I plus plus. I'm going to start at getting the thing. So I'm going to say C out, I plus one. And I'm going to put 
put something like that uh, and prompt the user and I'm going to say C in into numbers I. So I'm reading the elements of the array one by one. Right? We're good? So all the numbers, and user is saying they're going to actually enter numbers, no mistakes are going to happen. And now I can actually print them in reverse. So I can now say four size t i set to size minus one and i greater than or equal to zero and i plus plus. By the way, if you put i equal to zero, it's going to be an endless loop. Remember that. OK? Why it's going to be an endless loop? And I'm saying over here, i minus minus, obviously, not plus plus. Why is that? Because all variables in C language, remember that. This is IPC. I just taught it today to the, like the second session of IPC, so I have to remind you of it. All variables in C language are like this, not like a circle, like this. They have some value, and they go back to the, the smallest one. So if it's a, as an unsigned value, they start from 0, and they go up to a max, right? They start from 0, and they go up to a maximum value they can hold. As soon as you pass that, they become zero again. And if this thing that you have is actually uh, a signed value, then you have a zero. Why changes that one when I do it like this? Seriously. Undo. There you go. Thank you. That's better. OK, so now if it goes zero over here and in here, it has a minus min. Not min, minus max again, and max, plus max. Then the same thing happens. Like if it's, an un, if it's a signed character, you go up to 127. If you add 1 to it, 127 becomes minus 128 and comes down. We OK with this, right? That's how variables work in, in any programming language, as a matter of fact. OK? And they call it overflow. You actually went through it, OK? It actually goes over. So we clear that all, and now we'll see why it becomes an endless loop. If I say equal to 0, what it becomes an endless loop? Because when it reaches to 0 and it reduces by 1, what happens? It goes back to max. It becomes greater than 0 again. So be careful with unsigned values. So zero, i less than size, and i plus plus. And in here, I'm going to say c out. i plus 1. And do a column and go numbers uh, size minus i minus 1, right? Oh, <clears throat> sorry, 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 sorry. And then go to new line. Am I correct or I'm mistaken? So if the first one is 0, it will be size minus 1, right? Then it becomes 1, and it is, I think we're good, right? <clears throat> so we'll find out. And now if I run this program, I'm going to have memory leak. So, and you'll see. I'll show it to you. So I'm going to run it. So I'm going to say I have three numbers. So I'm going to say 10, 20, and 30. And it runs and shows it in reverse order. Perfect. Nothing goes wrong, right? Sit with code zero. Ah, life is beautiful. But if you do that on matrix and with submitter, submitter puts that thing in Valgrind. So it's, it's essentially runs the program under, not operating system, but Valgrind does. It makes 
measures the memory before, it measures the memory after, it measures the memory years. It sees you had these many memories blocked and you didn't release them at the end, so it's going to say you have this much memory leak. And I catch that one and I'll tell you you can't submit this. So how do we fix the problem? To fix the problem, this is what we do. We say delete numbers. That wipes everything out. Okay? That wipes everything out. But at the moment, in first days, or in first couple of weeks, blindly, after your deletes, make sure you set the numbers back to null. In here, it doesn't make sense, I know, because the program is ending. Who cares if numbers is null or not? Okay? But to follow the rule of always keeping unused variables as null, just have a habit of doing it for now. Later on, when we understand exactly how dynamic memory allocation works, we'll remove the, the assignments, the, the, the null, the making it null afterwards. But for now, just to make sure that you have everything under control. So if I say, let's put it like this. If I say over here, delete numbers, let's see what happens. If I delete it twice, three, if I do that, as you see, it exits code, so it crashed afterwards. Why? Because I tried to delete. So what happens over here is this. The numbers in here is pointing to a piece of memory that I have an array, right? I am telling to the compiler, ask operating system to release that memory. Operating system releases it. But number still holds the address of the release memory, right? When I say release it again, comp comp operating system wants to go over there and release the memory that doesn't belong to you. That's crazy. It's going to stop you. But if we did this, if we obsessively set our numbers, our thing to null PTR, then I will have no problem. Oh, whoa, my God, 10. Uh, seriously? There you go. Now I don't have any errors, nothing. Why? Because deleting, delete has this mechanism inside. The number is null. It means there is no memory. I'm not going to delete anything. Deleting a null pointer is safe. It's not going to crash because delete knows it's an unused thing. I'm not going to delete it. If you keep that rule that to use the to, to null always, it will never crash. We good? Are we okay? Are we okay one? Are we okay two? So. A. Oh, that's A2? Darn it. Uh, <clears throat> so this one I'm going to say, um, nom, 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 nom. What should I call it? So it, <laughs> I'm going to call one dash, I'm going to say one dash uh, DMA. That's CTP. DMA intro. So. Dynamic memory allocation. So right at out of the bat, at, right at this. So you saw what the syntax is, right? The only thing that I didn't mention to you was the square brackets after delete. Okay? If for any reason you need to allocate only one object, uh, this the example I'm going to give you right now is absolute nonsense. You don't need this. But I'm giving you so you know what the syntax is. Let's say I want, I, have, I want to have only one integer dynamically allocated. That's wasting memory, by the way. Because a pointer is size of an integer, and then you are having an integer point, so you're actually having two for one, which is wrong. But I'm just showing to you the syntax. So I can have over here integer pointer p set to new int. That's it. 
So I just create a new integer. All right? Or I can say new int 20. What does this mean? It's curly bracket. It means I want one integer and put 20 in it. Okay? So it's not square bracket. So don't confuse the two. Okay? For now, I'm just going to do it like this so it doesn't, it doesn't confuse the heck out of it. So it's one integer. Now I can say, for example, C out int, and I go C in, target of P, because now P is actually pointing to an integer. Now I can go C out int was target of P. Now I can say delete P. See, there is no square bracket anymore. When you, when you allocate an array, you delete an array. When you allocate a single thing, you delete a single thing. If you allocate an array and delete a single thing, operating system will only delete the first element. The rest remains in memory. OK, remember, so how you create it, how you allocate it, that's how you delete it. Got it? I have one integer, I delete one integer. If I put square bracket over here, it's going to crash because it wants to delete an array, but it's only a one thing. OK? If it's going to crash. If, if I have an integer array and I delete a single one, it's not going to crash, but you're going to have memory leak. So remember, how you create, that's how you delete. OK? How you create, how you delete. So I'm not going to run this. It's boring, but just, just letting you know. So in here, I'm going to say single dynamic memory allocation single deleting. Two. Immediately, for some reason, I, I'm surprised nobody asked. Like People say, does C have such a mechanism? Of course it does. It's not object-oriented, though. So in here, I say, give me 10 integers. It is object-oriented. It gives you 10 integers. If you want 10 integers in C, you have to see how many bytes you need for, an, for 10 integers. That is 10 multiplied by size of integer. Then you have to allocate 40 and then cast it to an integer to add data. So it's a very difficult thing. C is very manual. C++ is object oriented. If you have a student, you can say, give me 10 students. It allocates 10 students and gives it to you. In C language, you have to first see what is the size of a student, then it's a difficult thing to do. Are we good? All right. So that's a single one. Went through it. Now. Using an uninitialized pointer, one of the most common mistakes, you create a variable, a pointer, with data, and then set values without doing dynamic memory allocation. You're essentially telling because there is garbage in that pointer, it goes to someone else's memory and writes in there. That's immediately a no-no. It's going to crash. Okay, that's a bad thing. Always remember, do your dynamic memory allocation before you do anything. Another thing, null pointer assignments. You follow the rules, you set it to null, good for you, but you forget to do dynamic memory allocation and you start using it. That's null pointer assignment. It's going to crash. You're not allowed to write in address zero. And as I was saying, talking about variables and stuff, if you recall, Operating system approximately all uh, sits around here in memory. If this is your whole memory, <laughs> operating system is here. So if you're writing in zero, you know where you're writing, right? Next one. Stay within your limit. You are having size, you cannot go plus one. If you actually 
like you, if the size is now seven, right? First of all, keep track of what is the size you have, okay? Make sure you always keep track of what is the size you have. And when you do it, make sure you don't exceed it. One of the most common mistakes that you have, you create an array of 10 and you put something in the element 10. Remember, 10 fingers, 0 to 9. There is no 10. It's the same thing with the arrays. That's one of the most common mistakes. And you look at it, everything looks good because the program works perfectly. You created a, a dynamic array for a name. You forgot to put that plus one for null. So you, what is the size of the name? You see the size of the name is 20. You allocate 20 and you SDR copy it. What happens? It copies the 20 and puts a null at the end. Is not used in will run. And Dominican Republic, your programs tell your programs crash. You have to go online. You're doing library, it's going to catch you. It's going to tell you, hey, you're doing something wrong over here. So you've got to be careful on these things. Extremely important to make sure you don't go to the end. When you, uh, when you are using a pointer to allocate different size of memory for different purpose or whatever, you have to always make sure that you delete the input. That's another general rule. So as soon as you are allocating something new, before you allocate something new, you should delete it. If you follow the rule of unused pointers at null, if the pointer is fresh, because you set it to null, that you follow the rule. But if the pointer already is pointing to something, it's a safe way to delete before you actually allocate anything. That guarantees that you don't have memory leak. Okay. <clears throat> so correct state of an unused pointer for dynamic memory allocation is always pointing to null. And the size that you are keeping track of it is set to zero. Then you allocate the memory for whatever you want. Then you delete it at the end the way you deleted it, uh, created it. And then you go back and set it to null again. And remember, if you incorrectly delete it with no square bracket, it only deletes the first one, and you're going to have memory leak. Be extremely careful. Whenever you are Releasing, this is what you do. So if M data is not equal to null, if you want to just if you don't have any un unfinished business, there is no need for an F statement. Just free the memory. Because if it's null, delete will not do anything. You know that, right? So all those people who write if data, if pointer is equal, not equal to null, wasting the time of the program. If statement for absolutely or not. Just delete it. If it's not null, it will delete it. Okay? But you have, if you have some unfinished business, like you have an allocated memory, you want to do that, you want to carry that part by yourself. So do your unfinished business with the thing, with the data that you have, if you have any. And then delete it. As you see, freeing memory is not inside the if statement. OK? So you do that one, you free, and then you, you do the dynamic memory allocation. Reuse memory with new size and specs. Always stay within the range of where you are and don't go out. And then you're fine. It ends at 12, uh, uh, 125, right? Yes. OK. So <clears throat> I'm just going to give you a quick thing on, like, uh, I'm gonna, now I'm going to actually write uh, some, some, some program that 
kind of makes sense. I'm going to write something object-oriented, having deletes uh, uh, dynamic thing for you to see how things can be done and we go through it, okay? Let's say I want to hold someone's name. Okay, so that's my scenario. I want to hold someone's name. So what do I do? I'm going to create a structure, and I'm going to call it name. And that name is going to have a character pointer for first part, or for the name, and character pointer for the surname. And I want it to be kept dynamically because I don't know what the length of the size of the thing is for people. Are we okay? Are we okay? Now I want to dynamically get a few names, so I want to ask the user. I'm going to do the exact same thing I did with that integer thingy, but with names. But the difference is that e, I'm going to have a dynamic array of names, but each element of the array has dynamic memory itself, and I want to see how to do it. We know the syntax. is like I taught you 2 plus 2 is 4. Now we're going to send a rocket to the moon. Okay? That's what we're going to do. So, so that's, that's what we're going to do. So do everything modular. When I say modular, it just doesn't mean put everything in two separate files. Write small little things that accomplishes I, what do I need to do? I need to be able to set the name dynamically, right? So I'll do that. So I'm going to write over here. What do I write? I'm going to write over here void set name or set. What set name? Set. And I'm going to put over here name. Now I know I can pass a reference. I don't need pointer, pointer thingy. I'm going to pass a reference, call it n. And then in here, I'm going to say constant character pointer uh, name and const character pointer surname, right? How do I set it? Easy. I'm going to say, oh, obviously I'm going to need C string. C string. Okay. Now in here I'm going to say, because the name is coming in, I'm hoping that the name has null for it, all its values. So it's a good idea, although this is not covered yet, but doing something like this is very helpful, which means when the name is created, it's initialized by null, which means everything's blank in it. We follow the rule of unused things to be null, right? Now I'm going to, I, now I want to, I, I, what, what I'm going to do, I'm going to say m name. I'm going to say n dot m name is set to new character. Now I need to know what is the size of the name that is coming in, because I want it to be an exact match. So I'm going to say strlen of name plus 1. Square bracket, not that one. What just happened? I have a name that is coming in that I don't know what is the size. I measured its length, added 1 for the null termination. That's the golden rule for strings. I see you do that. For integer arrays, I'm going to kill you. An integer array is not a string. It's not null terminated. Only a, even a character array is not null terminated unless you really have a, a C string. A C string is the one that is null terminated. If I ask you to hold the postal code, you don't put a string for it because it's always six characters. Why do you need a null at the end? You follow what I'm saying? So don't always use strings blindly. See if you actually need something to end the data with a null. You follow what I'm saying? OK. But anyways, so that's that. Now, and I, I'm going to do that same thing for M surname. And I'm going to set it to new character, character, strlen of surname, right, plus 1. That's uh, when a cat does dynamic memory action, mu. OK, so new, OK, and sue name, <laughs> surname. OK, good. Now that I've done this, I want to know if I had enough memory. Right? 
I want to know if I have enough memory because maybe I'm at the end of my memory. There's no memory to allocate. Okay. If that's the case, what do I do? I'm going to say if n m name and n m surname. That means if they were both successful. Because if this fails, what happens? If this fails, it returns null. It means I couldn't allocate memory. I didn't have enough. It becomes null. So this guarantees that they are both OK. OK? If they are both OK, then what do I do? I'm going to say SDR copy into n dot m name, the name. I don't need to worry about it not to be fit. It's a shoe that fits the, the foot perfectly. So the copy will happen perfectly, OK? And I'll do the exact same thing with the other one, SDR copy into n.m surname. And I'm going to put the surname in it, OK? And I'm done. But what if it fails? What if it fails? I don't know which one failed, both or neither, right? I don't know. Both or one of them, correct? Because I don't know. I have to make sure there is no memory leak. I know that if I delete it anyway, nothing happens. If it's null, it's null. If it's not, it's deleted. So what I will do over here is to say delete, delete n dot m name, and delete n dot m surname. After that, I follow the Gordon rule of setting them to null. OK? So I'm going to say n dot m name is set to m dot m surname is set to null PTR. That, ladies and gentlemen, is a safe way of dynamically setting those variables. Nothing can go wrong with this. It covered all my bases. Now I can forget about it. That's the beauty of doing things in step and modules. You just write what you want. You don't think about anything else other than what a safe setting is. When you do it, you forget about it. You go for the next thing. What is the next thing? So that's how we set it. OK. Now, how do I deallocate it? So I'm going to say void deallocate. And I'm going to say over here, name, reference, n. How do I deallocate it? Done. Right? To make sure everything's deallocated. That's my name. Everything is done. I can set my name. And I can deallocate my name. Are we OK? All right. So now let's write our program. Now I have the detail of my name thingy, whatever I have. I'm going to come to main. And you always want the, 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 the gist of your code, the, the logic of your code to be at the top. So you don't put the functions first. That's ugly. I'm just going to put the prototypes at the top and put everything else down. OK, so I know this is set, and I don't need to say set what. Remember, polymorphism. Don't write set name. Set, it has a name. If you want to set something else, that one has to, it's going to pick a proper one. OK? Now I'm going to say over here, name, pointer names. So these are all the names. And I'm going to set it to null PTR. Now I'm going to have in, uh, size t. Actually, I wanted to borrow the other code. Forget it. I'm going to write it again. Uh, size t uh, num. See out how many names. C in num. OK. I'm not going to print it in reverse. reverse. I just want to get it. You'll see what. We can sort it, do whatever you want to do. So things like that, you know. So now in here I'm going to say, what am I going to say? I'm going to say, now, now I'm going to say names. 
is set to new name. How many num ones? Do I need to worry about if I have these things null in there? No. Because every single one that is created automatically will be null now. Null now. So I'm covered. Everything is perfectly set. OK? And also, sorry, one more thing we needed to add. Void print. Right? I want to print a name. Const name, const name, reference, n. And in here, I'm going to say C out. <clears throat> First, I'm going to say if n dot m name and n dot m surname. I don't want to print garbage, right? I'm going to say C out. M dot M name, put a space, M dot M surname, go to new line, right? And in here I'm going to say uh, else, see out, no name. Right? It's an empty name. So if anybody attempts to print those things, it's got to be all empty. Got it? So it is safe for me now to do something like this. So, and also, by the way, I'm going to write the delete right now to make sure I'm not going to make a boo-boo. <laughs> I'm just going to put it at the end, make sure it's going to get deleted. Okay, so, so I create it. I'm going to delete it. Now in here, I'm going to say, uh, just for the heck of it, I'm going to say see out names. Zero. Just for the, oh, sorry. Print names zero. Just for the heck of it. Just want to print it to see if it works, if it's garbage in it. Okay? Now I'm going to write the for loop over here going for size ti set to zero i less than num and i plus plus. Right? Now in here I'm going to say read name. Reference. Uh, sorry, read uh, names zero. Oh, I. Correct? I don't have a read. I just came up with it. <laughs> right? So I don't want to. I could write it over there. I don't want to. I want it to be modular. I just do. And now I'm going to do like this. Uh, there you go. So now uh, it should create it somewhere, did it? It didn't? Oh, it did it for main? Seriously? Okay, forget it. I thought it's going to be smart enough to write it for me, but it didn't. Anyways, it's not smart enough. So the print is going to come down. Copy. If you see, I'm going too up and down, you're getting dizzy, let me know to slow down, okay? All right. So that's that one. Let's do void read uh, name reference n. So that's what I'm going to do. And now I can create the definition for it. All right. Now in here, I'm going to say see out name. And then go C in. So in here, I'm going to have a character name. How big a name can be? How big a name can be? The most unusual name. 40? 40. So I'll make it 61. OK? And I'm going to have character surname. How big a surname? 81. OK? Something like that. So now I'm going to say C in name in a local variable. And that local variable is going to die when read is gone, right? Then what I'm going to do, I'm going to say C out surname, which means the other one should be capital 2. I'm going to have C in surname. Remember that uh, 
we assume that the user is a sane person. Okay? Now I'm going to say set n to name and surname. I don't need to worry about how dynamic memory allocation is happening. I wrote the set for it. Right? And then after I'm done, so this is going to read one by one. And then after I'm done, before this happens, I have to have another loop. to one by one deallocate the name, individual ones. Remember, deallocate OK? Remember, the dynamic memory, and in here I can print them all out. See, I'm going to do over here. I'm going to say print. So that's going to print all the names after I read them. OK? So now, let's see what happens. Let's see what happens. I, if, so essentially, what I created over here was something like this. Well, not that, but something like this. So I created an array of names. Let's say these are four names that I have. Four a, a name a pointer to names, and each one of these is pointing to a dynamic name somewhere in memory. With different sizes. And this one is pointed by that. So the yellow one over here that you see, this is my names array, dynamic array, that points to user set four. Then I went through every and each and created a dynamic one. If I only delete the names, this one is going to get deleted. I'm going to have all those dynamic ones remaining over there. So before I delete the whole array, I have to delete the individual dynamic memories. And like that, everything is going to be set properly. I know it's a crazy example, but I wanted to give you a crazy one so you can walk through it at home and come with questions. OK, so the next day you are coming, you're going to tell me far that you're nuts. That didn't work. I want to know how. how so go through this and, and, and tell me how it works. So. Clear all, draw. So now when I run the program, I'll get an error. Because SDR copy needs this, this thing over here. And we need to have it up there. So it's define that one. Let's do it one more time. So this is how it happens. It comes over here. Names is created. And as you see, it's null. Are we okay with this? And also, let me just move it to right a little. Okay. <clears throat> now it's going to say how many. Right? Then it's going to see in. So it comes over here, and I'm going to say two. I don't want to have 50 things entered, right? And I hit enter. So now it's going to create a dynamic array of two names. Remember when we had arrays, we could go on it and see the elements? You can't, because it doesn't know this is an array. For this, it's only one thing that points to a name, and we know that both names are null. You see that? So everything is working properly. It doesn't know second one exists. The compiler has no idea that what we have is an array. We know it's an array, because we created it. If it was an array, then it could know. Because it's only one pointer, it doesn't know if it's two or two million. OK? But we know. So in here, first, I'm going to print the first one. So it goes up and checks to see if they are both not null, which is not. So it comes over here and says no name. So that worked perfectly. It comes out. Now it's going to say read the name. It goes to here, creates two local variables, temporary ones. Then it gets the first name, <clears throat> goes to the next one, gets the second name, 
and now it has two strings, C strings, that pass to C. So it goes to set, inside set, measures the size of Fred, plus one, allocates that much memory in name, and as you see, all garbage. And the same thing for surname, all garbage, but it's not null. So it comes in, SDR copies Fred into that garbage, the first one becomes Fred. SDR copies the second one into the garbage, the second one becomes Soleil. Comes out, because everything was good, it's not going to delete anything, comes out. And goes out, goes back up. This one, I'm going to run it, I'm not going to walk through it anymore. I'm going to jump, jump through it, so this one is going to be <coughs> John Doe, and hit enter. So the second one is received. It comes in here, goes out, because it knew it's two, it goes to the uh, array, one by one, starts printing them. This is not null, this is not null, it's going to print it. Goes out, same thing for the other one, and now it comes out over here, says, I want to delete those memories. Goes to the first one, deletes the name, as you see it's Fred, after work become garbage, surname delete, follow the rules, I set it both to null. Make sure that they are not used anymore. Go out, deallocate the second one. First one is John, second one is Doe. I delete them both. Garbage, garbage, set to null PTR. Now follow the guidelines. I come out. Now I'm going to delete the whole array. And now I have no memory leak. Life is beautiful. Done. Okay? Dynamic memory allocation in a nutshell. Okay? So we're going to learn to, all, to do all this thing uh, uh, object-oriented. That makes your life much easier. You'll see that. Because of what we have right now, you have to be careful about these things. Soon you'll see in object orientation, we create mechanisms and we tell to the compiler, when name is dying, do this. So you don't need to worry about when the name is gone. Because when name is gone, it's going to automatically call all the deletes, delete okay? All right. 12, 20, uh, 12, 15, uh, 1 o'clock. When it's done, break, come back for quiz. Please don't come over and ask questions. All right, thank you. You can ask questions afterwards. I'm going to pause. Maybe we're going to do.